I am Travia Stewart, and I want to help you move past barriers and obstacles that are preventing you from getting what you want in life. This is Breakthrough. My guest today on the podcast is Daniel. And those of you who follow the podcast know that Daniel was my very first guest. And the evolution, the transformation that I have witnessed in Daniel, I had to have him back on the podcast because he is someone who has done the work. Daniel is someone who he's an actor. He almost gave up acting. He's a singer, he's a writer, and he lives in New York. And we dive into Daniel's latest breakdown, his emotional breakdown that occurred just this past December. And Daniel shares with us so intimately his thoughts, his feelings, how he felt like he couldn't really be himself always wanting and feeling the need to perform or be someone that he wasn't. And I love this episode and the conversation that we have because he's authentic, he's vulnerable, and he's raw, and he's so genuinely sincere. And Daniel's someone who does the work to create the life he wants to live. So here we go with Daniel. It was uh, the beginning of December last year, 2021. Um, had all my Christmas lights up uh, in my apartment. First uh, holiday, spending it by myself with my cat. And I just come home from work. I've been an actor for, for so long. Um, but recently, like, you know, during the pandemic, like everybody, everybody does, we figure out a way to make it work. Um, and that's the headspace that I was in, just making it work, not making it, I was ma yeah, making it work. Um, not necessarily making it what I wanted it to be. Um, because what I would like most look forward to was, um, just being at home by myself with my cat, which is great. That's fine. Um, but I realized that, um, uh, I was really, really looking forward to it, to being alone a lot more than, uh, was healthy for me. Um, so after work, uh, as I, as I stated, like in December, I came home and, um, I guess it was about five or six and I knew like the new, the new Adele album had dropped and everybody knows that when you, when you listen to Adele, I mean, you go there to, I mean, feel it. <laughs> I mean, um, so, uh, I hadn't listened to the whole thing yet. So, uh, I, th I said, tonight, I'm going to go home. I'm going to pour myself a bourbon. So I walk in the door. I put everything down. I, I feed my, uh, my loud ass cat, Jacob. Um, he's very happy to, to see me. I am for him too, but it's, it has loud. Um, so I pour my bourbon um, on the rocks and I start from the beginning of her album. I mean, it sounds, it sounds silly, but like it was, I was like, this is going to be a moment for me. I'm just going to listen to it and, and feel it out. And so I listened, I listened to it all the way through and um, uh, ended up drinking a lot, a lot more than, uh, than I had anticipated and um, getting really, really sad. Not because it was like the, the album itself isn't like super sad, but I knew that what I wanted to do that night was drink and be sad and cry uh, and be by myself feel sorry for myself um and let myself have that because i'm like oh i'm doing so well i'm holding it all together this is good i'm not even like holding it together but like i'm just like i, I feel so good but it feels so uh, familiar for me to to just be at home and do something that i uh felt familiar doing which was throughout the pandemic just you know we all sat at home and a lot of us ended up drinking a lot more than we uh we should have um but we found a way to cope but this um it was comfortable for me to to do this thing to to listen uh to this album to feel sad 
and to keep drinking. And um, so I just kept drinking at my computer. I mean, and I was just sitting there drinking a ton, um, listening to the same song over and over again, this song called To Be Loved, uh, and making myself look back on, look on, look back on this relationship that I had that I don't even, I don't even think about this guy. And when I do, it doesn't even, he's, he's like a, um, a stranger that I have memories, shared memories with. And yet I made myself think about that time and feel sorry for myself. And what I realized is that I wasn't longing for, for this person anymore. I was like longing to just feel sad over that guy. That was, that was me that, that was in this relationship with this person. So kept drinking and drinking. Um, I drank like half a bottle of bourbon that night. Um, and I was like, what the, what am I doing? Why, why am I, why am I doing this? And the moment I started doing that, I started to like, I wasn't like stumbling around, but I was drunk enough to like go into the bathroom and vomit. Um, and then I looked at my face in the mirror. I was like, it just like tears running down my face. And like, whenever, whenever I throw up, like the, these like, uh, like the blood vessels break under my eyes. And I remember looking at myself and thinking, what am I, what am I doing? Why am I, why am I doing this? Why did I have a perfectly great day? Like felt really good. I was excited about Christmas, excited about the holidays, excited about the life that I had at this moment. I come home, it, it feels good. I have this foundation. And yet it felt like I was choosing that night to, like give myself a sad night, which is good. Give yourself, I like to give myself room for emotions, but I chose that night uh, to be sad when I didn't need to be. I chose to like dive back into these, into these uh, emotions, into these stories that I used to tell myself because somehow it felt like control or power or something where sometimes I just, wasn't feeling control or powerful, finding like a semblance of control by making myself feel a certain way, by choosing sadness. And that's, and that's what I learned is that that, that night I was choosing to, to be sad. I chose it. And, that, and that's when I realized, uh, well, in the next morning after like, you know, wiping the vomit off my face and uh, washing my face and, um, looking at this like $50 bottle of bourbon that I had drank half of that should have lasted me like three weeks. Um, I mean, let's don't get me wrong. I love, I love to have a nightcap, but those nightcaps shouldn't be um, uh, a night like, but instead of a nightcap, it shouldn't be like a night bucket hat, just like a big, just like fill it with. Um, so the next morning I, I woke up and I was like, what the fuck? What, why? I felt like, Daniel, like you're, you're hung over right now. You didn't drink because you were sad. You drank to make yourself sad. And I was like, what, how does that, how does that um, add up? Why, why do you, why would you want to do that? And it felt like meeting an, meeting an old uh, abusive friend that felt comfortable because you knew him, which I'm not, I'm not downing being sad. We need to move through our sadness. But to make yourself feel sad, uh, that's, I had a bit of a, a breakdown. It just felt, it felt good. I knew I had to move through that so that I could realize that I had the uh, potential to, to do that. And, I, and what I'm noticing now is that I have patterns that I, I do that. I make, I'm like, oh, but you know what happened to you, right? Uh, and it just feels, it feels comfortable to be, to be sad. It feels comfortable, especially when I'm starting to feel happy. It feels comfortable to make my, myself feel sad, to remind myself, no, 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 you're going to be sad. I'm happy that I, that I did that. I can listen to Adele now without, uh, <laughs> well, there are other reasons why I listen to Adele now that makes me feel good, but uh, I think it was just, I, I, I made that night to choose to choose sadness, and um, I um, I realized that I can do that, and um, it's not that that's disappeared, but I realize when I do it now, I can hear it, hear it start happening.
That's so incredible. I love how you are so openly vulnerable with sharing that story with us. And this was during the time where Daniel was going through my Create Your More program. And and we were communicating through Voxer and Daniel shared this experience that he just shared with you guys through Voxer. And he was like, and, and the realization that came through your mind was that, oh shit, I'm choosing this. Yeah. Yeah. I purposely put these things in order so that I could feel shitty and sad yeah. and relive all these things, right? Yeah. And so- a lot of times people do that in life, you know, I'm sure I've done it, you know, you know, decades ago, whatever, because now I purposely choose to like, I don't really like to listen to sad, slow music because I know that's the effect that it has on me. So I choose things like EDM, you know, where I'm yeah. always jumping. Right. And so Daniel, looking back through that whole evolution of yeah that experience of going through that breakdown, who was it that like, when you looked in the mirror and you mm -hmm. saw, you know, the capillaries, the veins and everything after you had thrown up, who was that guy? And tell me what were the things that you were saying to him as you looked in the mirror? And then how did you come, like, what was the thought process coming out of that and who Daniel is now? I was, I said, okay, you're you're there i see you in front of me yeah you you've gone through a lot um you've been through a lot um but let me let me take the reins now you're okay now let me let you be happy you are um too valuable to yourself and to others to your friends to your family to keep doing that and these opportunities that you want that you want and that you see for yourself, how are you going to be available? How are you going to be available if you if you keep filling your time doing things like that? So very powerful. And what I've always loved about you, Daniel, is that you are an open book. And I know you're an actor. You're a guy who is in touch with how he feels somatically in his whole body. Would you yeah. say there was an area of your body that was like release? Like, and what I'm asking is there are times when it's like, oh, you know, I have withheld speaking up for something that I believed in. And whenever I was around <laughs> and in that situation, my chest would just tighten up again because I, it, like yeah. I, I, I emotionally locked that physical pain in my chest. Mm -hmm. Where did you lock those things in your body and could you feel a difference after you're like okay i'm moving through this oh yeah absolutely even like thinking about it like i i feel i do feel it like in, in my sternum and i feel like uh, i feel like the heat i mean there's a reason why we call it hot headedness right because the blood just really does i feel it feels like everything's trapped here it feels like something uh grabbing me here and feeling my ears and my eyes and no wonder whenever uh, I looked in the mirror and all the, it was all bloodshot. I mean, not bloodshot, but like the capillaries had burst, had bruises under my eyes. What I, what I've told, what I've told you before about like how I, how I ground myself and stuff, something that I've found, especially through like trauma after I went, uh, had a, had a breakdown, uh, like a, a true emotional breakdown that you, that you helped me through. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember over and over again, what I would do is uh, touch my chest and sort of like, there's like a rhythm that I would sort of just keep. It was like a um, sort of just uh, opening myself up, and I don't know what I don't know what it was, but I just kept hitting my chest like this, just a little bit, just to get something back in me, have control over what was happening in my body, and that's something that I I've continued to do. That's something that whenever I looked in the mirror, I I realized I had my hand on my chest, and uh, it's just sort of where where I go and what what I know feels um, safe, and I know that um, since one of one of my biggest love languages is touch I realize that I don't have to get it from I don't have to get it from a partner or from friends that I can touch I can I can uh put my own hand on my chest and feel that and feel like my own my own love I'm not I'm judging uh, I'm judging myself as I, I hear myself judging myself like you just said like okay yeah you're gonna love yourself okay fine that's great no but like I like truly practicing loving myself by touching my chest Gosh. checking in with myself uh, and being in like um, letting that unlock, just massaging that out. When you're <clears throat> talking about feeling safe, you know, 
what are the warning signs that you are aware of when you're not feeling so safe, when you're like, "Uh oh, that snake's about to rear its ugly head. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to identify what those signs are? Yeah, it is. Uh, there's a there's a tightening in my chest. There's a quicker there's a quicker breathing. My hands tingle a little, a little bit more. And if I'm walking somewhere, I notice I'm shifting my weight forward a bit more. And I, I notice that uh, I've like I have big calves and big uh, like shin muscles. That's strange. Shin muscles in the, in the on the top. And I think it was what I noticed is that I I was a very anxious person as a, as a kid too. I remember I used to just walk, just try to get away as quickly as I could. And I remember like my heels hitting the ground in a really hard way. And whenever your heels drive into the ground, your shins tighten up. So I noticed whenever my shins are tight, I'm like, no, 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 wow. dude, ground yourself, slow down a little bit. You're still walking just as quickly, just because you're leaning forward doesn't mean you're going to get there any fucking faster. I mean, just, just <laughs> I'm just going, I'm just no like, way. no, just chill for a moment. You're yeah. good. Just there is like a, like a tingling, like a, in, in my, in my ears, I just feel myself like noticing that like tension. Uh, and yeah. it's like a driving forward, trying to get somewhere fast. Right. Um, anxiety even comes out like that with, with me on stage. If like I'm with an orchestra or something, I know that my impetus is to rush if I'm feeling nervous and I'll always feel nervous. I always, I'll always feel that, um, that adrenaline, you know? Uh, yeah. So I have to um, consciously let myself just relax, relax into it. I would love for you to share as beautifully as you've been as you have been sharing who Daniel was mm -hmm. before the man yeah. who's sitting across from me now virtually has allowed himself to open up and receive love because it's been a minute since you've been yeah. in a relationship. And yeah, how is this time different emotionally? Oh wow. Um it's emo it, it is so much different emotionally because I noticed, well, A, of course, the person. Um uh, his name's Johnny. Uh, but I noticed myself at the beginning um opening myself up. And because I was a stronger person, I was no, I got really, I really, I was really in tune with how my, how my body feels because I had, I had improved all of these relationships in my life. My, my, my friendship relationships, my familiar relationships, um, my work relationships, my, um, just all of these, uh, my, my teacher, my mentor, mentee relationships. Um, I was more open in that way, but I hadn't approached a romantic relationship just yet. But all of those, all of those versions of Daniels and all of those relationships came together and was like, okay, no, 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 you got this, you got this, you got this. And I remember feeling really scared. It was really tough being strong and being in my own skin and putting myself forward rather than someone showing up as myself rather than what I, in the past, I would show up as, I don't know. The guy, the guy in the suit and try to be that, that cool, the cool guy and fit into like these New York crowds and all of this bullshit, this noise, this static, and then ultimately not feel good enough. Showing up as myself, that was really, really difficult, especially those first few weeks. Uh, and I, I, reached, I reached out to you and, uh, and I was like, I don't know if this person, person likes me. And, uh, and you, you asked me, what's the evidence that he likes you? And I said, oh, he's already given me all that evidence. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess I can just keep showing up. The more I showed up as myself, the more vulnerable. I thought we thought I was a really vulnerable person, but the more vulnerable I was, I, it was actually physically painful. I realized that I am a really fucking great partner. <laughs> I, I can support, I can, I, I, I can laugh. What I realize is that whenever I show up as myself, I'm able to accept love more. God, and this person shows me so much love. I mean, he show, he shows me so much love and um, takes the piss out of me, can make fun of me so much. <laughs> but that's something that I need because we we both just bounce off of each other in that way. It feels good to have met someone at eye level. And I think we both met each other at eye level at the same time. There's not any looking up or looking down or looking. There's it feels good to to look over and see him there and um even though he's he's in london i do not second guess my trust for him or that's not something i second guess the thing the things that i that i have to listen for are those old records those old those old yeah. versions and keep checking in because it doesn't just disappear it is 
it is it is a practice. It's a it's a it's a constant, and it's uh, and it is well worth it to do that because uh, I mean I told you like in one, in in class like one of my the the things that I want in my life at some point I said that I know where, I know it's going to be accessible to me as a as a partner. Yeah. Um, and my God, like what was it? So we ended on the eighth. Oh, it was the twelfth. <laughs> Well, was, yeah, that Sunday was the 12th. Johnny and I started talking on the 14th. Wow. Okay. Right after that. Um, and I, I came out, I came out of the workshop with you knowing uh, what my, what my purpose was, because yes. that was just, it's, I mean, because we, we wrote it down, we wrote down what our purpose was. And that sounds like, oh, I know what my purpose is, but like, no, you, you write down, you're like, okay, no, my purpose is to help people. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to help people. Mm -hmm. And the more I was clear about the why of that, every some like clearing some static and stuff i think i was um actually i know i was more available to accept love so it was the right time so daniel yeah. it was the right time and i love yeah. this 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 whole transformation that i that that you are evolving through what i want you to dive into now is you know sometimes like some things like disappoint you you don't get the yes for this, okay? So now we close up a little bit and then something else happens and then we close up even more. So coming out of that huge emotional breakdown, I want you to just, just peel back the layers right now yeah. of how all those things that you were going through emotionally were locking you up from acting and how yeah. you've been even opened up more and like, oh shit, that affected yeah. that too yeah oh my god i was in a relationship with someone that was a part of my same industry and i not only did i compare myself to other people in the industry i was I compared myself to to this person which was unfair to both of us so whenever i threw out the baby where I, when i threw out the the bath water i threw out the baby with with the bath water i threw out everything i moved i moved away from new york city i moved moved upstate i got a i got a new cat got all new furniture, got new, every, all new everything. You, I was uh, literally always at the Goodwill, always finding that furniture, <laughs> furnishing my apartment. And then I, uh, the, when the pandemic hit, I had time to, to step back and, uh, oh, this feels good to not, to not act. That's what I was thinking. It feels good to not act. I wanted to find what it was that, that felt good. And I think it just, it felt good to, to be doing something for myself. That's what felt good. And I, um, I, what I realized is that after like making a complete career change, I told my agents, I said, um, I don't want to act anymore. Pulled out of my union uh, or like froze my union or something. Got into all the schools I wanted to, uh, was literally about to start uh, school. And whenever I, whenever I met, when I met this person, Johnny, I was like, it's like something opened up to me and all I want to do is fucking sing. I, I just like, with my, with my guitar every single morning, just like, what, what is this? Why am I just, I... why am I singing? And it, there was some, there was something that was locked up in me, and I realized. And of course, Johnny's like, "I'm gonna butcher his accent." Uh, is it, whatever you do, don't stop, don't stop. Even if you're at school, don't stop. Just keep it up. He's, he's a casting director, um, so he's so he's like he knows his shit. So he's like, "Don't, don't." He's gonna kill me if he watches this. But then I, I realized something. There was. I was like, "No, actually, I I don't want to go back to school." I want to act and that's okay. And acting isn't, isn't my exes. Acting does not belong just because he's in the industry and uh, much older than me, even though he is in the industry has like done it much longer than I have. It doesn't mean he owns it. And I was doing it to get away from him. I, I was getting out of acting to get away from him. And I realized, no, 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 wait, no, I'm safe now. So I pulled out of school and I called my agents and told them that um, I can, I'm committing to this. And somehow, I mean, I've had some, some good success and I'm excited about some more stuff. I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes. I realized uh, at that, that in a career that feels so, like I'm asking for permission all the time, I had to yeah. do something that felt like I was in control. I was like, nope, I'm not gonna do this software I really show. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, be with this agency. I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that, nope. I'm not doing it. Um, so whenever I've chosen to come back with, after this something, this, like this love part of my, my heart has opened, 
And I see this person uh, also that's given me the space to, to, to do that. It's, and I've given myself space to love. I think it's yeah. just unlocked something. And I love that I now know that I have access to that. Yeah. And I have control knowing that I'm going back in, going back into acting. Um, I'm, I'm actually excited to audition where I was before um, I would dread it. And I think it was because I would always, I was always comparing myself. I just have air now. I've given myself space. I've given myself air and I feel control. And I know that my, my uh, success is not based on uh, any person. Yes. And, it, and uh, it's, it's based on, it's based on me and the decisions I make. Wow. So Daniel, as we wrap up this episode, is there one tool like someone who's listening right now, what is the thing that you fall back on that you go, you depend on? It's like when I recognize Daniel is falling back in this place, what is that tool, that strategy that gets you right back out of it so that someone else who possibly is going through this is like, oh, I can do that too, because I recognize some familiarity in what Daniel's sharing. Tool for me is unequivocally the, um, the ritual that I have that starts my day. I can always depend on it. I know that my found, I know that if, if I don't do anything else that day, I can do that. And I know that I'm going to feel like I did something because we all have tough days. I know that I get up, I open the blinds, I light a candle, light some incense. Um, and, I, and if I'm feeling extra, um, out of, out of my body, I, I go to something that makes me feel good as a kid. And that was watching cartoons and taking a bath. It's gonna be different for everybody, but I will set up my laptop on the toilet and, uh, and get in the bathtub and watch, uh, watch cartoons. It's, it's really, and it, it's good to, to watch things um, that are predictable, that, are, uh, that don't have any kind of conflict so that you can feel comfortable like a, like a friend and you're doing it for yourself and with yourself. And uh, I'll always have like a hot, a hot drink, a hot tea or a hot coffee. And I'm, I'm all about the coffee until it just makes you look. <laughs> um, <laughs> but always, always lean back on that ritual of um, lighting a candle, cartoons in the bath, opening the blinds, feeling the, the sun on your face. Um, and sometimes that's tough. That is really tough. But if you can do it, if you can get the lighter out, if you can just light the candle, and if you can just run the bath and get in the bath, you're going to be okay. You know, and that's starting your day with your safety. This is, it's yeah. fueling yourself with how you want to feel, you know, as yeah. you know, you guys hear me refer to it. It's getting yourself up to a level of homeostasis so that you're yeah. aware when you fall out of it later in the day. And, you know, and you're, like you said, it's different for everyone. So I know that it's taken you some time to find what is your morning routine and what is it that works? Because, yeah. you know, things, different things work for different people. So yeah. Daniel, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for yeah. sharing everything that you share. You know, I love having these conversations with you and you and I, I mean, we could get on the phone and talk for hours and hours and hours, yeah. know. you know, and, and I just love seeing this man today who is open <laughs> for love who is going to be on stage again, because I'm going to be waiting for, Hey, Trey, guess what? We're I'm performing in Portland, wherever it is. We're uh, there. <laughs> we are there, my man. Yeah. So yes, Daniel, thank you for how much you bless this episode. I hope that lots of people are learning from it. And I thank you for the blessing that you are in my life, 100% in our lives. So <laughs> I love it. I love the man who's sitting here, who, look so happy and Thanks. you look happy and healthy. So I'm so glad you found that Daniel. Actually, you didn't find that Daniel. He's a better Daniel. You have created a better Daniel. Yeah. I love it. Thank, thank you, you so much, I, Daniel. Thank you for, for helping me get there. Thank you so much for listening. If you're someone who's finding valuable from these episodes, I would love it if you would leave a five-star review. And I will also love it if you would share it with someone else. Who, could, who also could find value in, in these episodes. And because it's March and because I have two open spots for coaching, if you are someone who has felt a gentle nudge, a little tug, it's like I, I resonate with what Travia stands for. I, I, I resonate with her style. If you're someone who 
would like to explore what it would look like to maybe go on a coaching relationship with me, go to my website, TraviaStewart.com, T-R-A-V as in Victor, I-A-S-T-E-W-A-R-D.com, and just fill out the contact form, and I will contact you in like 24 hours. And so I would love to have a conversation of how I could help you break through your glass ceiling and create your more in your life. Thank you so much for being valued listeners of this podcast. And I couldn't be, I couldn't do this without each and every one of you. So thank you so much and enjoy your day. Take care. Peace.